that um, we had that best of three of Bears, and they shut down Ad Finham. It was close, two games that were pretty close, but in the end, Bears did manage to uh, triumph in both of them, while Na'Vi have been a seemingly steadily growing as a team managing to, to beat Secret in a best of three. Do you favor one of these two teams in this upper bracket? Ooh, very close. I'd give like a, maybe a tiny edge to Bears just based on the way they won mm -hmm. um, and the, the the performance of the team they beat. I feel like Adfinim had a pretty good showing in both those games, but just Bears were just always ahead of them and made some really nice moves for Secret. I don't feel like it was the same Secret we saw in the style of the qualifiers. Um, they were a bit predictable, obviously, in Game 3, running the same draft, allowing... I mean, Navi only changed one pick, but it was a pick that worked out a whole lot better for them, so... Um, I think Navi have stepped it up, but I think Bears may be even tougher than what Secret was yesterday. I'm I'm right there with you, man. I think that um, one notable thing is that just Navi facing up against a, a team Secret that did not look at their strongest. And uh, Bears, meanwhile, I mean, it's only one performance, but it was a damn good one. And uh, yeah. look forward to, I mean, especially because for me, it was the fact that Bears didn't just like win the laning phase and go on to stomp and Venom or something like that. You know, there wasn't a very clear, like we won early and then we won mid and then we were able to close out the game sort of progression. It was the fact that they lost early game and were able to make that kind of recovery. That to me says there's a kind of maturity and and uh, whether it's strategical or or also, in, I guess in a way, leadership wise, there's some sort of maturity in the team that allows them to be able to make those kind of, um, uh, I, I guess, comebacks, but also have the kind of patience. Um, to be able to play around their strongest cores and play conservatively when they need to. Yeah, and we saw them some really good coordination. Some of their swap into Earth Spirit silences and, and stuns were really on point. Um, so I think they were, the team they, they beat 2-0, Ad Finim, were playing like, that would look like Ad Finim in some of their, like, in good form. So I think with that in mind, that Bears got the 2-0, were able to come back. Uh, they're definitely appearing to be uh, a true force in this European qualifier. But I mean, Na'Vi, they, they are definitely on the, on the rise as far as these last couple of weeks go with this new roster. So we'll see what, what PyCat has in store. No big surprises with the Sand King. Um, there's kind of that stable hero. They, they, more than other teams, will run. We saw it yesterday on RMN uh, in a, was it both the last two games? So two games of the support Sand King. Mm -hmm. So a hero that they run less than most teams as far as in a core role. Lifestealer is going to go the way of Bears. Navi, I mean, they didn't ban that one out. They felt like SF and Underlord had greater priority in the ban pool, um, which is uh, a, a little bit surprising to me just because Slardar Lifestealer is such a potent combination. Um, and then you have a, even more minus armor potentially with the Vengeful Spirit and that long range wave of terror. So this is going to be a formidable combination. Do you think that it's just because of the Weaver that they feel strong enough uh with this potential core pickup and its uh, clear counter to the life stealer, yeah, they're probably <laughs> feeling pretty good about. It. Now they feel even better. They go into the dazzle support, so uh, dazzle yeah. Rubik, not like on paper the best support duo, but as far as what they're up against, dazzle was fantastic this game. One of the few heroes that actually will save a hero that gets jumped by a slaughter life stealer. Like, they perhaps get taken out of the fight regardless, just because they get as low as they do but it allows them to get off uh, at least most of their spells and if that's a weaver that time lapse out so you get the grave off it lets weaver time lapse back to full hp and suddenly you turn the fight around so yesterday we saw navi like when they were banning the life seal it wasn't until that fifth ban against secret so evidently they feel fine versing the slider life seal if they have picks to counter it with but they don't feel fine versing like a fifth pick life seal or slider how are you feeling? I, we don't know Bears' fourth pickup yet, but um, one hero that would have uh, a decent amount of synergy and does do well against Lifestealer would be uh, Templar Assassin, um, another hero with intense physical damage. Um, there's also still their Tinker uh, out in the mm. pool if they wanted to play a slower game against Bears. I'm liking both those options, uh, the physical damage, the Roche taking potential of Weaver TA. Uh, perhaps allows you to snowball a bit early and have a more dominant mid game, but Tinker is perhaps the, I guess, more explosive option, the kind of more, the bigger playmaker in some ways that uh, maybe if you want to look at Dendi and if he's probably feeling, like if he's feeling, feeling the Tinker game, he'll let you know. I think that's one of those things where it's like, you're not too worried about Slider Lifestealer against yeah. Tinker mostly. You're playing the trees. It's quite hard to maybe get vision. You'd have to rely on the, the Venge with the wave uh, to catch him out, but We'll see what, what Navi have in mind. They, they worry about an alchemist, so they ban that out. 
Uh, not sure too much what that's. It does definitely maybe suggest that Navi want to kind of focus more on being able to take mid game objectives and not and worry. And they are a bit worried about some of those high ground defenders. Yeah, the uh, Alchemist definitely would change Bears' lineup quite a bit. They'd have this combination of aggression with Slaughter, Lifestealer, um, and Timbersaw being able to defend some of those outer towers quite niftily. And then, then you have this Alchemist just kind of growing and growing. Um, but instead, they're going to go for a very aggressive option. They do ban away the Tinker and going to go for the Queen of Pain for themselves. Another vehicle potentially for the Lifestealer. So we won't be as worried about this Slardar's, uh, the support Slardar's Blink Dagger timing, which I think is, is uh, a bit of a relief in some ways. And then we also have this very aggressive tempo controller that Navi is going to have to deal with in the mid lane. Yeah. Are you worried it's at all too greedy? Like with the Timbersaur as well and like the offlane role, they've got three cores that all want like a good amount of farm? Uh, yeah, a bit. I mean, they've got... It, it does allow... I think one of the, the saving graces of this is that Queen of Pain and Timbersaw have really great wave clear. I'm going to be spending a lot of their time in lanes, but Tim, uh, Lifestealer will spend a lot more of his time in the jungle. Um, my, my biggest concern is the fact that you also have this four position Slardar who needs some farm. Eventual Spirit can obviously go without any farm Templar whatsoever, assassin. but uh, there it is. The ban on uh, Tinker turned into a Templar Assassin pick. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious which one Nobby would have preferred, if they would have preferred to <laughs> yeah. have the, the Tinker for themselves, but they will go uh, this Templar Assassin mid against a Queen of Pain, something Bears, I'm sure, uh, have anticipated. Yeah. Perhaps with the, the matchup against Co-op, Dandy would have preferred the Tinker. He is one of those players that is somewhat, he's more matchup driven than a lot of other mid players where he really likes to be put in a position to win his mid lane. The old Navi used to always give him like even 2v1 lanes with Sineko, uh to just make sure he wins his lane. So perhaps it would have been the preference, but TA to me looks like the better like overall strategic pick. What it brings to the table as far as being another good hero to, to fight into the Lifestealer. You've got great physical damage, something Lifestealer doesn't fight well into. You've got good Roche control. It's a hero that takes objectives better than the Tinker. So I like the pick overall for their, their draft and strategy a bit more than the Tinker. It does mean we are going to have a very intense clash going into uh, that 15-minute marker and uh, going into 25 minutes based around Roshan, based around controlling some of the outer towers. Um, there's going to be, I think, uh, a very kill-heavy game towards the, the mid-game based on these final mid pickups. We're going to see an early TP coming out from Yapsor. He is looking to block the spawn. Did he get spotted by Biver? Yeah, he did. He did. So, He's he knows that some of the retreat, blocked. Yeah. That was four insta TPs. I was like, Whoa. as soon as I load in, I see like four little gl glowing lights on my map, and I'm just like, holy crap, that's a, a big investment. But I mean, TP is 50 gold. If you scout out a ward, it pays for itself. If you prevent a ward, it pays for itself. So, both teams not too concerned about chewing through a tiny bit of their economy early on. So uh, we'll have the first counter ward be placed out. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, we have uh, a nice aggressive laning ward placed out by bears. Uh, similarly, Navi also have a jungle ward to be able to see some of these rotations of the vengeful spirit and maybe the Slardar. Uh, let's see what their game plan is because they are going to be faced up against a Sanking off lane in general, uh, despite RMN playing it two times in the series for Navi yesterday. We're just going to have a regular old initiating offlane Sand King. And I, and I feel like his Blink Dagger timing is going to be more important than most because they don't have a backup plan when it comes to initiation. Whereas Bears, uh, they at least have the Quap Blink with the Lifestealer and Fest combo if Slardar doesn't get uh, a Blink Dagger by, you know, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. They, they've got the vehicle regardless of the Blink, but I do worry, like, can Lifestealer actually get the farm to go for those early rotations? Like, how good of an armlet timing is he realistically going to get against a Sand King Dazzle Lane? This is actually... I remember the old art style Navi. They were the first team to really prioritize Sanking as a core offlaner, um, and they were often doing it in this dual lane setup with the Dazzle. And you get a cost, like you you prep for a caustic, you hit a Burrow Strike in, into a Shadow Wave on top of a, a, cre a Creep Wave. You're doing it and a massive amount of burst damage that often safe lane carries are just not ready for. Melee safe lane carries have it even worse. So this is a very potent lane for Navi down bottom. Look at this. They, they uh, I, this ward's kind of interesting. I think it's to scout when the supports come forward, uh, and loop around the side to try and gank Pycat. Um, they could have some sort of ventral spirit slardar combination that loops around the side. You know, that's very common. Um, it's just an interesting ward. Obviously, very unlikely to be countered. As you can see, the regular lane counter ward just barely off the mark there. 
Yeah, yep, so recognizing that PyCat's going to be left alone with the Dazzle down bottom, the Rubik trying to secure Dendi's uh, first creep wave or two, so he's bullying PyCat uh, as far as this first wave or two goes, but you're not too concerned about this if you're Navi. You know that lane is going to eventually push out. Uh, you're more worried about what's happening now, which is Yapso doing some of these side pulls. He's going to actually be able to deny a decent chunk of XP and farm with this little pull up here. And he gets it off. Meanwhile, Navi are trying to interrupt a similar pull scenario by uh, Bears. Of course, General is going to be very happy with stacks if he can actually get in there with that Caustic Finale. But uh, Adam has deemed it worthy and... I think the easy camp pull, is st that stack pull, is always worth doing, no matter what offlaner you're against, just because it's harder to get in there and will cost General a decent time out of lane. Some free CS for Firo during that time. They are going to be able to get the Burrow Strike onto Adam, see if they can stay ahead of him here with the nice it's heal okay. bomb. Yeah. It looks like they should be able to kill him. Caustic Finale is going to pop him, slow him down, and General will pick up the first blood. It was already getting some good extra farm with that neutral stack and now gets a first blood 650 gold so yep so oh, sorry uh no yeah but rmn can kind of leave him a bit more alone now if he wants general with that early boost can easily kind of 1v2 this lane if rmn wants mid lane which is where he's headed for then they're getting pressured a bit with yep showing up so it looks like navi happy to rotate a bit early on yeah, it looks like Yapsor is trying to hypnotize dendy with the dance of the fish people here just standing on the high ground spamming crush Forev going to be pushed away, but uh, his, this lane should get fairly easy for him if he can get his uh, level 2 and then level 3 reactive armor. This lane becomes pretty much uh, an easy breeze for this hero. Dendi missing out on dodging that uh, Shadow Strike there with the meld. A little bit of wasted mana, and he desperately needs that bottle, and Vada is contesting for CS pretty well right now. 13 and yep. 5. Yeah, and Iron Man can't really offer a whole lot. Perhaps it's going to be like giving Dendi some extra regen and harass potential, but not really hoping for a kill. General down bottom is getting wrapped around on, so does need to be a bit careful. It's one stun. It's the next one. Are going to be able to slow him down. General does not actually have the mana for uh, Burrow Strike, and I think he felt with the open wounds he wasn't going to get out anyway. Level 2 Burrow Strike, not going to give you that much distance, so keeps the mango intact for another day. Yeah, it's tough. Like, you're one or two mana short of the stun. You don't really want to pop your mango just for what's likely going to be a death regardless. So he accepts his fate and will just head back to the lane with Trenkle Boots and the Pull Man Shield. So now he's got a lot of armor, some good damage block, and this lane gets a, a lot harder to find kills like we just saw now that he's picked up these couple of items. And perhaps we'll see even Iron Man, like, spend some more time down there with him on top of that. Forev. Having to deal with the bugs right now is in a bit more trouble than I anticipated. Uh, looks like he should still be fine, though. Gets away. Yapsor, similar scenario here. Looks like they use the Burrow Strike to catch him, but he will just TP out. Some close calls on both sides for bears, but I do manage to get away. Uh, hey, you know, I, I actually uh, I looked something up last night. I think it was a, it was a clip of RMN. Um, back when he was on Goomba, and you know, Firo, who who uh, used to go by the name Bakemono, uh, actually played stand-in for Goomba a couple times. Hmm. Yeah, I was like, I, I was like okay. thinking, I remember the name Bakemono from something other than NA teams. Firo getting low here does not have rage for another two seconds. He's going to be slowed down by the Caustic Finale. Pop, 19 HP. That's all he's left with. General tries to get towards him, but can't quite get it. Adam kind of body blocks him here. They are going to throw out the Burrow Strike. Yapsor is coming in hot, and General may be turned around on. He gets the kill on Adam, but can he actually get alive? Yeah, out alive, and that's not going to happen. I don't think not with Vada making the rotation. So, General, I think he gladly gives up his life. He, uh... Forced a rotation out of the mid, and he knows he's not going to make it out because of that. Yeah, if they get Dazzle out of there, okay. It, it's not a bad trade as far as Navi are concerned, even though it is a core for his support. The pressure under the life sealer is kind of denting his farm. He's been forced to buy and use shoot through a lot of his early regen. He's just not really having the easiest lane in general. And once you TP back in, well, that's when Zen King is going to have an even better time here because life sealer is now out of regen, and you can put even more pressure on him. So every time you die, General gets to come back to this lane and have a slightly better time than where he left it. Another pullback here on Ferev. Ferev, his CS 16 and 3, doing okay for himself, but when it compares to General's dominance of the General. laning phase, as he... Yeah, I, I thought for a second he might go for the dive, but... 
Vero actually forced to TP out of lane. Very uncharacteristic for a, a lifestealer, that's for sure. But seems like Navi's aggro dual lane is a huge success. Yeah, and once Bear's ascending their support mid and focusing a bit more on Dandy, that's where Vero's like, all right, I'm alone down here. I may be on out, heal up before coming back to lane, potentially even consider rotating into the jungle. But still looking a bit dangerous down in this bottom lane, considering how much vision Navi have now set up there. Iron Man has done a good job getting a couple of deep wards up, and rotations could cause big problems for uh, Bears down bottom. Although, it doesn't look like any of the other three heroes are prepping any kind of TP rotations just yet. It does seem like uh, these supports from Bears, they did all right for themselves in the beginning. I think they were, they've just been a tough scenario this whole entire laning phase you know eventual spirits had to deal with the aggro dual lane yapsor did okay i think with the boots pickup and his harassment and pie cat it was basically the only thing he could do uh, but i think the these supports are just gonna have a really hard time finding successful rotations around the map Fada's gonna get caught out by a rotation from general didn't see that one coming and with dendy lining up all those side blades he actually get a free kill there yeah going for an extra point in the side blades early on having that even further attack range, Dendi, you know, to keep his distance from the Quad Paras down and set that one up really nicely. Very clever rotation from General, perhaps just feeling a bit uneasy at this bottom lane after dying a couple of times. Finds uh, a more important kill in that mid lane. Rotation's coming faster and faster. The Rubik is now at the bottom lane. He does have to infest in order to dodge all of this. Pops out now. Firo has the help of Vada. He misses out on the big ultimate onto General. They will manage to pick up the two supports, it looks like, but Vada can finish off General before the TP. Oh my god, it was so close. Look at that. The nuke is actually still yeah. following him after the TP. That had to have been just a half a second clearance there for General to get out alive. Yeah, it was a like a melee cast range on the screen that somehow followed, that didn't hit, but followed him back to base split second difference there and what a I mean perfectly timed TP from Sankin. Could have gone for the Baru TP perhaps deeper in the trees, but he, he knew that timing just well enough that he gets out of there. Still, Fata, his rotations have been able to help salvage this bottom lane a couple of times. It looked like Navi was starting to overrun it with the aggression from this Dazzle Sankin duo, but his TPs down here have been very, very important. Uh, has helped that he's had a couple of uh, nice runes to go with it. He's now got himself a regen rune as well, so able to uh, keep up the aggression early on. General is now going to be top lane, has the epicenter. I think they're hoping to be able to use the Sand King's intense magic damage to uh, keep Ferev in check, but he needs an additional hero, I think, to be able to do this, so never mind. They're actually just planning on making this a laning phase, and Navi pressure the safe lane tower instead. Looks like General's even going to just walk himself back to the safety of his tier 2. So safety, four of his is going to make him get chased down a bit for it. But the TP in bottom four wants to be able to defend as well. He's already got decent reactive armor stacks, so feels fairly confident in his ability to survive this drove here. That'll be tested, though. He's going to be able to get back underneath his tier one tower and clear the bug. But Navi still want to keep the pressure on him and take the tower as a result. Forev now has to deal with that weave minus armor that's kicking into gear. Looks like he... Is just going to hide in the trees and let the tower fall, and Navi aren't going to uh, bother him too much. They take the objective that they wanted. Looks like Firo might be able to take a similar objective here. Forev. It's even a little bit more pressure, but nothing should come of it. Yeah, this time he hasn't got the reactive armor prep, but at the same time, Navi aren't quite... Actually, they're perhaps setting up to try and go on him with the Rubik still hiding in the trees, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. While that was going on, uh, Navi almost lost General in the mid lane. He was kind of had to burrow into some trees and TP out, but that was a three-man rotation from Bears to try and kill him off, but they, that was unsuccessful. It's still overall, to me, looking pretty good for Bears. Like, their four position slider is already above 1k gold. He's looking like he should be able to get a decent timing on a blink. Lifestealer, despite the pressure down bottom lane, with that tower, is out farming his counterpart in the Weaver. Um, and 4.6k net worth only behind the TA seems like a, a decent position for him to be in. So I think all in all, uh, this early game has gone much better than some of the early games yesterday we saw against Ad Finim. With that said, Ad Finim is normally a much more early game focused team. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. I wonder if Navi are going to be able to uh, cobble together 
This Blink Dagger timing for General, he's not too far away from it, just another 800 gold. And then from there, if they can get a Blink Dagger on Dendi as well. He looks like his farm is... Where, where's... Is he missing something? Oh, he already has it. All right. I was about yeah, to say, he, had, uh, he added another Blink Dagger in his Sticky Buy, and I was like, wait, what? Oh. But he's yeah, got it now, so... Very farmed. He's With also, double like, by far the highest level in the game. Like, he's he's level 12, the Quop level 10, I believe. Yeah, halfway to level 11. Then he's just been farming through Ancients, farming through the jungle. He is just playing the efficiency game, and... And this is uh, just to me a recurring theme with these TA picks. Like the hero, like even if you have a slightly rough first couple of minutes in the laning stage because you get dual lane, like you always seem to pull ahead around the 10 to 15 minute stage and get a very good timing on Blink Desolator. Forev, keeping it cool against three heroes, doesn't wow. use the, the timber chain. It was this weird stalemate between him and General. If he used the timber chain, he would have been hit by a burrow strike. So he just walks calmly back, and now he's able to make the turn. Can't quite get the connection on the Rubik. Finally gets it now, but is dropped a little bit low on HP as a result. Vada sitting in the river, waiting for it. Forev is going to try and bait these heroes into play. Vada jumps forward, managed to get the quick kill on a Pycat before the time lapse can be used. And now General is forced away by Forev. He does manage to dodge the Shadow Strike. We'll turn around for the two-man burrow, but he desperately needs to get out of here. He does have a TP if he can juke his way through this. Forev gets the connection, and they find the kill. That is huge. They shut down that Blink Dagger progression for General, and that means that Navi will not have that big window of double Blink Dagger timings where they could take over the map. Man, now we have drafted like this lineup where they're like, okay, we're against Slaughter Lifesteal. Let's have a TA, let's have a Weaver, let's have the Dazzle for the A. Like, let's draft against this Slaughter Lifesteal. Right now, it's four of on the Timbersaw who is absolutely destroying them. He's, I mean, he's only been in three of these seven kills, but it's the amount of attention he's forced Navi to kind of apply to him. Like, he's constantly laning against two, three heroes. He was 1v3 there. He got that first kill on the Rubik with no help at all, and then buys enough time for the Queen of Pain to swoop in and get an extra couple of kills. He has been an absolute nuisance, and it's it's gone beyond the point of being a nuisance. He is an abs absolute problem right now for Navi to deal with. It does kind of make you wonder, where has the Timbersaw picks been, especially with Weaver being such a frequent pickup? Um, as soon as Navi locked down as to uh, relatively physical damage, uh, more relevant supports, and then this Weaver, the the Timbersaw just become became this excellent counter pick in the fourth slot. Bears? Smoke is going to pop here. They're going to run into Fada. They could use this quick kill. Blink Dagger forward. Melt Strike. And they will manage to pick it up. Yapsur is going to come forward. And they're going to try and punish Navi with a quick buyback here from Fada. See how many they can get. Biver is going to be the first one down. General into the trees. TP's out. And Dendi's away. So that buyback, absolutely not worth it for Bears. They needed a lot more than just a support kill. It's like a, a dream outcome. Killing the Quop and her buyback. Losing just the Rubik, if Sand King or someone gets his TP cancelled and there's a second kill for Bears, you say, all right, that buyback, it's expensive, but it kind of makes up for itself. It's not really a win, but at least you break even. But getting only a support is far from good enough. Trying to take advantage of having that shrine there to prevent Navi from retreating, but then he has Blink, Sand King just goes to the instant TP, and Bears are not going to make anything of it immediately. They are grouping up towards that top lane, though, and they... Smell blood. In terms They're gonna of go for a swap. Oh yeah, you can see Yapsor was, he was pump faking that Slytherin crush, waiting for Adam to be able to get the swap on a Pycat so they could get a quicker stun than Magic Missile. But now, as a result of a missed opportunity, they're gonna have to leave Adam behind. He will end up going down, and uh, a failed smoke rotation for Bears. It's been a rough game for Adam. He's now what, zero three, but more the, the overall farm. He's got brown boots and a couple of wards in his inventory. He, he was the one who had to soak up the pressure and let the life sealer farm bottom lane by often throwing away his life and without a good escape. When when these ganks fail, he's left to kind of left to hang, and that's something Navi have been able to punish a couple of times now. So. It's a bit of a tough spot, and for Na'Vi, this is now giving them some extra time and room to get General's Blink Dagger up. So the double blinks poses the next big threat for Bears to have to deal with. It does feel like it, it may be uh, a bit late, though, with this Bloodstone closing in. Maybe if Forever actually does get the Bloodstone charges and they can still successfully kill him with the double blink daggers, then yeah. 
the timing actually won't be too bad, but I'm just afraid that Ferev may be a bit too big. Queen of Pain also has a big increase in armor with that Veil of Discord completed. So some of these cores are going to be a lot harder to deal with than they would have been maybe two or three minutes ago when the double Blink Dagger timing for Navi, I think, was expected to happen. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Even stuff just like having a range drop on Queen of Pain means that initial Blink Bar Strike is going to do... Uh, a bit less damage than you'd normally expect. Queen of Pain, I mean, 1300 HP with the Strength Treads is looking fairly tanky, so you don't have to necessarily kill the Timbersaw, but you ideally want to be killing core heroes with these Blink Daggers and a potential smoke from Na'Vi. They're, they're grouping up and posturing as, as if that's the call. Dendi's has got a Deso, so with this, they actually, in my mind, they can kill anyone with the Sand King TA Blink uh, if they manage to burst them down without any kind of outside influence, like a Swap Save or a, a Slider Crush. They can kill a Timbersaur or a Queen of Pain with the Deso, but... And an Invis rune that. on Sand King, too. So this is... I mean, this has got to be public enemy number one, right? Ferev, yeah. he's been getting way too big. He's got his Bloodstone charges. General is there to be able to stop this TP out. And here comes the onslaught of attacks. Ferev, he does a decent job tanking through most of it, but he ultimately will never be able to escape that. That being said, Bears do get a decent prize out of that whole entire thing. They get the mid-tier one tower. They go, and they got the kill onto uh, Pycat. That was their smoke blink reveal. So Slider Adam. came in with a blink dagger. They blow up the Weaver. Mm -hmm. They're trying to turn that Weaver kill into a Roche, but they're very low. Yeah, they've got the Slider Amp damage, but Na'Vi are well aware of what's going on, and they've got a blink epicenter at this point. I feel like Adam is playing the role of, uh, you know, a medieval messenger. They get the quick <laughs> kill in bottom lane, and he immediately yeah. goes up here, right? He wants information. Are they TPing into the shrine? Do they know that we're going to be able to Roshan? Do they even have the TPs up to be able to do this? And sure enough, gets the info. Navi are hot on their tail when it comes to uh, the Rosh taking opportunity and uh, not going to be able to. Ooh, look at this. Three-man oh smoke. They're just going to go again. right back for Ferev. He's already lost that first chunk of Bloodstone charges on the fresh pickup, and... They won't find him a second time as they'll swing towards me. I think before I'm realizing, all right, that one creep wave is pretty good, but farming any further is way too deep on the map. Then. Dyer checking out the edges of the jungle with their smoke, hoping that he'll pop, hoping that they'll find the timber saw still, but we know that is not going to be happening here. They have a blink dagger onto Yaps or. Thought they were going to smoke for this one, but they're actually not. Now, there is this defensive ward here from Navi that is going to allow PyCat some info on this uh, trap that is set up behind Fada. PyCat is actually going to oblige them just a bit with the Shukuchi on through. The Absor will come forward and will manage to hit the crush, and they are going to be able to blow up PyCat. That shouldn't happen with a ward there, I would say. <laughs> I would say so, too. Not sure what was his miscalculation. Did he miscalculate that... Did he not know that the Blink Dog was up on Yapsor? Did he not know the Infest combo was there? Defense yeah, on mid lane. Just about the Infest. Biver, he'll be the first one down. Bears will manage to keep their tier 1 tower barely up. Let's see if they actually just deny it out with only 113 health left. And straight to Roshan once again. Pretty low respawn time, so 10 seconds until the Weaver's back and can throw that swarm in. That vision from the TA traps allows Navi to know instantly when this is going on, but same time, this Roche drops very fast. By the time Weaver respawns and TPs, Roche is going to be uh, effectively dead. Right, we said Roshan was going to be uh, high contention here for these two teams. You have Templar Assassin, Weaver on one side, great duo to be able to bring down the big boy. And uh, Bears obviously have the Slardar Amplify and the Vengeful Spirit Wave of Terror, so sure enough. Bears putting a high premium on being able to obtain that Aegis early on, denying it away from Na'Vi, and will now be able to progress the next five minutes with some confidence. Yeah, they've got a really strong pushing unit now with the Desolator on Life Seal with an Aegis. He can very safely siege towers through the Rage, uh, and his damage output on them has been very distinctly increased because of this. So, so what Navi's response is going to be, whether they try and combat and fight into this Aegis or if they just try and take more of a split push approach. Uh, the Timbersaur is still often kind of off in his own, maybe posing a potential bounty for Navi to pick up. But as it stands, it's uh, Bears with a pretty so strong position in this bottom lane, looking like they should be able to take a T1 tower. And Navi contesting this one is just going to be very tricky for them. They're smoked up, but it looks like they're more thinking about this top lane than defending bottom. And I don't think this is going to come to uh, a surprise to Forever at all, right? He's the only hero that's showing on the opposite side of Bears. 
Um, and he also has those Bloodstone Charges. Unlikely that Navi want to try and contest the Aegis. So much more likely coming from Ferev. So he's playing it really far back. <laughs> a little bit of a dangerous blink forward, but still gets the Timber Chain away. He's going to be caught underneath the Tier 2 here with the Epicenter. He didn't expect this much of a dive, but maybe he did. Calculated, he gets away. The burst damage is just not enough for Navi, and now Navi have overextended themselves. They're going to lose maybe Dendi here, who's caught in by the Crush, but they don't have the Counter Vision. He manages to blink himself away. General's still sitting on the side here, but he has a Blink Dagger up, a Burrow as well, and will manage to get out. So Ferev baited Navi into a dangerous position, but Navi still managed to extricate themselves quite nicely. Yeah, Navi on point with the retreat there, but that was a scary position to be in when you're getting TP'd on from behind, you've gone in that deep. Felt like there was a bit of a disconnect between the Rubik and Sanki. Like, Sanki, if he wants to go for that Blink Barrow, Rubik needs to be preemptively running in to get the follow-up Telekinesis. And, uh, well, these kills are going to keep on happening. Iron Man at the bottom lane gets found, and with this, perhaps Bears can now focus their efforts on this Tier 2 bottom tower. Navi have just been struggling to find the kills. If you hear is that show on the map, mostly the Timbersaw have just been too elusive and too well positioned. Yeah, I believe that's the uh, Orchid reveal as well for Fada. So they're going to take that Tier 2. He's going to very rapidly close in on a, a Lincoln Sphere that he's going to try and build here. The only disables that he's fearing in this game are the Rubik Telekinesis and the uh, Burrow Strike. Frev is going to Timber Chain straight into the hands of General. General's holding onto his Burrow Strike until the next Timber Chain is attempted, but the Absor is now here to be able to stun up General, and they easily make mincemeat out of him. Dendi will successfully retreat back, but Bears are hot on their tail, maybe for another push. The last Tier 2 is left in the mid lane. If Bears want to achieve this with these Aegis, I think that objective is pretty much free. I'm not sure if Navi can actually do much to contest. RMN going to be blown up by Fada once again. Bears are just being very efficient around the map right now. They're not completely five manny. They're just going, like often it's like a four man push while the Timbersaur is alone defending a lane and pushing it out to prevent Navi taking a tower. And then if Timber gets gone on, Bears rotate to punish the aggression of Navi. And then they'll equip alone setting up some of these solo kills. They're just moving around the map very well. Yep, Saur. Won't find Dandy, but that T2 tower you mentioned could be what Bears have their eyes set on now. Bear will pop out, blink forward by Biver. Will manage to pick up Adam into a two-man burrow strike. This is a decent setup for a kill on one, maybe, but Biver's also going to lose his life here. Firo eats him alive. They do manage to pop the shrine. Yapsor gives up on the kill on General. Firo's dropping lower and lower. He has that Aegis, so they're going to have to play around that now. Fareb managed to blow up General on the side. Kind of stuck in the trees here. It's going to need a moment to get out. But uh, Navi will full out retreat with the loss of their big disabler and general, as well as the Rubik not feeling comfortable pursuing this fight for more. Yeah. For will tank the tower to get some damage in. They may get a little bit worried about this one now that the weave's been applied aggressively onto themselves. That's a, a good setup for Dendi to perhaps try and defend this one and get aggressive. And we'll put That's, that to uh... the test here. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> yeah, good old Timber Soul. See. Blink bots going back for a Yule Scepter now, it looks like. Definitely a good a game to go for some ar armor items now. Uh, you're not always going to have those reactive armor stats up at the side of a fight, so having like a Shivers Guard can really help protect yourself, but the Yules also similarly uh, can be a nice little defensive tool as well for your team. Man, I really like the way that Ferev is playing this. He, he seems to have just really good reads on what Navi is up to. Uh, like that play, you know, he knew they were coming top lane, and I would say that's many pro players would be able to make that kind of read, but the way he was still able to bait out the rotations, uh, knowing the uh, the maximum amount that Navi could do and playing around that, uh, I think Ferev has just baited Navi into so many rotations that have been very unsuccessful. Yeah, he's uh, definitely been the biggest space-making hero on their team. He's been involved in the least kills of his whole team, but... It feels like more than anyone, he's the one fighting Navi's lineup. Like, he's not normally often getting kills. Sometimes he's just taking up their attention. Two, three heroes coming his way, uh, and then he survives, gets out of there. But it's this, this constant pressure and this, this worry in Navi's mind that they have to address the Timbersaw. Or that maybe he's the kill that they can get, but they haven't been able to do so just because of some good play. <laughs> that shrine is popped. Dendi. He just revealed himself with that blink out. They had a fresh counter ward laid out by Adam. Dendi is waiting his team out. But, I don't know, with the Aegis down, 
maybe Navi can actually take a full engagement against bears, but I'm still kind of hesitant uh, just because of the bear strength that we've seen from earlier. Then again, I guess but now is a better time than most, right? Their initiation would still have some decent strength against the Queen of Pain. They might be able to blow up somebody like the, the Slardar as well. If they wait for some of these other defensive items like Lincoln's or BKB, uh, their initiation is going to lose a lot of its bite. And I mean, that's as Lincoln's now completed. This is going to make both him, Timbus, all, all three of these bears cores uh, nigh unkillable at this point, uh, assuming they don't get like caught alone against four or five heroes rotating. Uh, even the supports are going to be uh, fairly tanky gradually. The Slatter is going to have a solar crest completed soon. Oh, they get Fada right before the Lincoln's okay. is there. So the stun is actually out, and Dendi hits that last hit needed to be able to finish off Fada. They get Adam as well. All right, Navi, their That's... choice to initiate is actually just picture perfect there. Right before That's the courier seconds is cap. He, that's, I mean, that's not really a dieback in the classic sense, but he bought back like four or five minutes ago, so this respawn time oh, is true. very long for Fata. Wasn't that Fata like 20 long. minutes ago or something? Yeah, it was ages. <laughs> that was like, I feel like I was the early game. It, yeah. That's brutal to suddenly die at like 26 minutes. Like Part of it's also that he's such a high level. He's level yeah. 20 on this Queen of Pain. Uh, and with that earlier buyback, yeah, he's got a long respawn, but it's not something Navi can take advantage of. They just don't feel confident enough to push any more of these outer towers, and they also recognize that there's threats to them in these other side lanes. Pycat gonna jump out and get gone on by Firo and Yapsor. Viver is there to be able to interrupt some of it with the telekinesis, and Pycat gets a full HP revival. Nice two-man bro strike out from General with Dendi. Lined up those side attacks. He'll make short work of both of them. And now Furev with a heavy amount of minus armor ticking in on him. I don't think he stands a prayer against this physical damage. There it is. Four down from Bears. Navi. They hit back real hard in this very small window. It seems like at 25 minutes, they got the, the kind of momentum that they needed. Now they're just pushing against bears time and time again. Yeah, I mean, this is like the time to start winning some of these fights. It felt like bears were just about to reach a decent power spike uh, with the Lincoln Sphere pickup. And suddenly Na'Vi just find a good couple successful initiations in a row. It's not like they picked up any amazing game-changing item. It's really just been a change in the way they played it. And this fast Roshan respawn plays to their advantage. They're going to perhaps take this before bears can react. And they counter Adam's ward as well. This is looking kind of grim from bears, which, as you said, like I thought they were going to reach a really big power spike and they were going to be kind of unstoppable with all three of their cores having so much and PyCat. I think what that is one of the notable things I want to talk about was the fact that the Weaver feels a very unsuccessful core in this game because he just, he seems to be so slow. But after those couple of fights, he's finished off his Diffusal Blade and finally we do have a real damage item and some real impact from Weaver in, in these engagements. Yeah, I think that's the big difference maker where suddenly Weaver is going to be able to dish out damage, but also chase this defusal build means the Slider can't just like quickly sprint, like crush and sprint away. Uh, and the ability to not get kited and keep your opponents in place is going to make a big difference for Pika and his damage output. So Na'Vi with Aegis in hand can start to threaten to do what Bears were looking to do, which is take all these out of towers, take map control, and take some of these shrines. Suddenly this game gets blown wide open. It was an eight, almost 8,000 gold lead turned to zero based on the, those couple of fights in a Rosha and Na'Vi just finding a big opening and completely getting themselves back in this game. Na'Vi almost found another opening, rapidly rotating into their shrine. Remember when we were talking about with that Aegis, you know, Bears finishing up that last tier two and opening up shrines and stuff. Like, they were so close to obtaining total map control, but now Na'Vi has held on long enough. They're beginning to reach sort of a, a mid-game stride for both their Templar Assassin and their Weaver. TA is beginning to max out here. Or, I shouldn't say max out, but I think this is one of her biggest power spikes, right? When you've got Blink Deso and you've got that crit. Your, your burst damage has reached probably its highest point. You have the, the best opportunity to one-shot people than you that you ever will in this game. Yeah, I mean, good news for Firo is he gets his Assault Chris at the same time the Daedalus comes out, but I mean, you could you could say it the other way, like, well, now there's this armor item up, but now Dendi's got a big amount of burst damage, so he can kind of try and overpower Firo despite this new armor pickup. So it's going to be very tough for Bears to stay alive against Dendi's TA. They have just about complete the solar crest so if they can use that aggressively on dendy he hasn't gotten mkb uh to get rid of it which makes life a little bit easier 
Um, but even so, like that's relying on your slider to like not get caught out and burst down very early on in the fight. Yapster himself uh, is fairly squishy. Doesn't have the mobility of a four staff. Doesn't have anything outside of the blink dagger that really offers him survivability if he's using that solar crest on someone else other than himself. Bears are trying for uh, a lot of split pushing opportunities here. Vada has very frequently pushed waves into tier three towers. T Vero even uh, feeling ballsy enough to get a couple of swipes there on the tier three itself. They are gonna go for a TP back here, half on a shrine, and Fada is going to be the bait here onto the tier two tower. The RMN briefly shows himself <laughs> as a uh, little bit of a dare of bears to go on him, but he gets the TP out nonetheless, and uh, bears unable to make any sort of connection. This constant, they keep trying it, split push and then rotation back, see if they can catch Na'Vi in the axe, see if they can get these one or two pick -offs instead of trying to fight them head on. Yeah, Bears are un unable to really utilize this slider lifestyle of Jewel, it's felt this game. They've had one or two nice pickoffs that have maybe led to a tower, but it's felt like at the, this key mid game, mid to late game stage, they haven't found that like game breaking pick where it's like, okay, they killed a core, there's another Roshan, there's the T2 tower, there's your shrines down. Like they've really slowed down, and a lot of that is a testament to Navi's vision and defensive play. Oh, Viver. Viver. Oof. That was an aggressive blink, but it's going to be okay up here. Maybe General can still route them here inside the Radiant Jungle. He stalls for a moment, and that's going to lose him an opportunity on Yaps, or it looks like. Adam may still be the opportunity. Jump forward. Dendi has the burst damage necessary to kill him before the TP can follow through. So a small pick that can turn into some more pressure on that Tier 2 tower, though... They don't really have a creep wave, so they're just going to have to overpower back to our protection. But I think with all this minus, da minus uh, armor and damage, they can yeah. do it. Take them a bit longer, but slow and steady, they'll get it. And then be able to kind of return back to their other lanes and push them out. Or they can try and force bears back if they want to. They've still got... Uh, okay, not that much longer left on the Aegis, so it does look like it's perhaps time to not try and force any t risky fights because of that. Yeah, one of the, the dangerous things is if they did go for that high ground, they'd lose their tier two, and they still are at a, a significant tower um, mm. disadvantage here on the side of Na'Vi. There's two healthy towers, relatively healthy uh, towers left on bears protecting those shrines, and that map control is pretty big. When you you see this, this game, we're just playing like uh, this big cat and mouse game and I'm not sure half the time one team's the cat and half the time they're the mouse but they keep on running back and forth trying to go for these split pushes and routing the enemy team for the most part it feels like Bears is the one trying to play a little bit more hit and run style while Nobby's trying to get their hands on a, uh, a full five man engagement um, but it does seem like both these teams are playing around pushing out the waves getting this map control and seeing if they can just out rotate their enemy yeah, I wonder if the like the way the aggression's playing out, like you mentioned, where Bears more can run, if that changes now that the Aegis expires. Dendi is still playing without a BKB. He, if caught, can die very quickly. Hasn't hit that level 25 refraction instances uh, upgrade yet either. So he is a potential kill if they can get the Slatter life seal on top of him. And now there's no Aegis, suddenly it becomes a bit more tempting. The problem is always going to be if Dazzle is in the neighborhood ready with a grave and. If anything, you can see based on Navi's position now, they may have lost the Aegis, but they still feel very confident to maintain their push. PyCat leading the way with the Creep Wave, just safely gets to the tower. They back off a little bit, considering all the heroes that are missing, but Navi themselves are sticking much more as a five-man unit compared to the Bear Squad. And he's actually trying to pick up a, a Scotty next on PyCat, so... Uh, a really okay. big tankiness upgrade, as well as a little bit more kiting against that... Um... That against that life stealer who already has uh, plenty of issues against uh, against a weaver. Yeah, HP and armor great against Slada life stealer, and as far as survivability goes for a weaver, this is one of the better items. And then like hiding this wall is going to be great. But there's uh there's the duo, the Slada life stealer pop out, get a quick kill, get themselves out of there. Timber saw even showing up to make sure everything went swimmingly with his TP in, but. Ended up being a straightforward pick off. It, it's it's always funny that it's it's Iron Man. Like we saw it yesterday with a yeah. Sand King, where it felt a bit more fitting. Dazzle perhaps less the hero to be off farming a lane alone. You're not really able to escape those situations. 
And I think part of the problem is that they, they don't have their own forever. You know, they don't have a Timber Saw, the kind of hero that can split push really well, deal with waves, burst them down. Dazzle, I think, has to be that hero because if it's if it's Sand King or if it's any of the other two cores of Na'Vi, they're lacking a significant amount of damage. Uh, and they don't have the kind of survivability to to uh, actually live through that combination there. So uh, Dazzle kind of has to be that hero, right? To be able to defend against these split pushes because he's the only support that is going to be able to clear through those waves and still be not like not important enough that if he does get yeah, ganked, Navi don't lose a, a huge power. I think that's a really good point because, yeah, the Sand King they, ha they do have again is general, but yeah, he's the initiator for Bears. Timbersaw is not really, they've got the initiation and the slider life sealer, and their hero who's clearing out the waves has boots to travel. So there's that extra, not just wave clear from a hero you don't need, but also that mobility where he can then TP into the fight, has has a blink dagger on top of it. So it's a lot easier for bears to kind of move around the map, uh, whereas Navi are kind of forced to stick a bit more. And then when they do defend the lane with one hero against split push, that's where these kill opportunities will present themselves. And bears have been really on point at taking advantage of that. But... If Navi can secure themselves another Roshan, get the lanes pushed out in a pretty decent place, it will set them up to go for a, a pretty big push. But as it stands, it's a, a playing keep away. I do feel like Navi, I, I'm not, I have no idea on how exactly, but I do feel like they do need to come up with some sort of plan that's a bit different. Um, just because it does seem like bears are reading all their movements so far. They're finding these quick opportunities on RMN, turning these split pushing and forcing Navi back time and time again. I do kind of feel like Navi need to try and uh, do some sort of smoke rotation, do some sort of bait out. Maybe they lit RMN, bait out a, a Slardar rotation or something, or maybe they just wait for Vada to be out of position. They actually catch him with the telekinesis right before the blink, pull back there, but now the blade mail is activated and they can't actually finish him off. General is instead going to be the target. Bears actually managed to make a turn there as they were all in the off lane jungle. They're going to be able to find RMN as well. Yapsor actually is going to be slowed down by RMN. Good force staff over the trees. He tries to go for the shallow grave TP out, but there is a Yule Scepter there. That being said, he did his job. He stopped Yapsor and this Lifestealer uh, Slardar combination from pursuing for more with that poison touch. Uh, he managed to stop them from pursuing onto Dendi. Bottom lane though now. Oh, I got done. Ooh, that's brutal. I thought he was going to get out. Yeah. Four of it top is a bit alone here, but looking like he should be able to hold his own against Dendi with all the armor. And, ah, that that mid engagement was just so rough because the blink was used towards the mid lane, but for Fada to farm. And Sand King's like, all right, I can initiate in. He actually forced the. He, he tried to use the Force Staff to break the Lincoln so that he could stun the Quad. But at the same time that he used the Force Staff, Rubik actually broke the Lincolns for him. So what ended up happening is he forced the Quad and missed the Burrow Strike because of his own Force Staff. It was like one of the most unfortunate timing of events from Navi possible. And yeah, that was pretty nasty. Bears get a couple of kills, they get an Aegis now, and suddenly they're back well in the driver's seat. Denny pops a refraction, will manage to get the blink out because of that. So now it's Bears' turn. They're going to be able to corral all the lanes for Rev, making sure to push out bottom, not giving Navi any opportunity to split push and force Bears' eye backwards. So with this Aegis, they're going to take the rest of the shrines and presumably go for a high ground push. Navi do have some okay high ground defense, though, in the form of General and his Blink Force Scythe of Ice combo. Yeah, the, the Scythe pickup is perhaps the X Factor. You kind of mentioned Navi feels like they need to do something a bit different, something to catch him by surprise, and a, a Hex initiation onto a, a Timbersaur or a Life Sealer could be that surprise factor. Even someone like a Slada, you can burst. Taking out Slider is probably one of the key heroes to try and remove as early as possible in the fight. Dendi, uh-oh. Finish off that creep. No, he doesn't get it. Now he's going to have to deal with Forev as well. He does get the Shallow Grave, but Bash stops his TP. He's in huge trouble. Forev, he spies out the Dazzle as well. The Refraction's going down. Dendi needs a little bit more time to get that Blink off, but it's just not going to happen. So RMN, who tried to save his buddy, is also going to go down. Bears, this is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to crawl in the lanes. They wanted to be able to catch Navi when they attempted to push out some of these lanes desperately. And now they found their opening to be able to go high ground and take a lane of racks. Yeah. TA does have buyback. We'll have to consume that one. And 
Even with a buyback, this is a very hard defense to make. Forov can just zone heroes out with his sheer survivability and tankiness on the front lines. Bro strike for Bro strike. General ends up in the middle of the team and stunned up. Swap back there. On to Fana. We'll make sure that he stays alive. As Dendi throws his pot shots towards the way the Queen of Pain actually comes forward now, throws out that ultimate. Pycant does manage to dodge it inside the Shikuchi. Forev drops a little bit low, but he's just creating space now for the rest of Bears to finish off that lane of Rax. And jump away. Bears are going to turn for two now. Firo actually being slowed down by Pycat. He goes ahead and throws out a time lapse. He actually loses a little bit of HP. Needs maybe use another shrine here. Forev is just making sure that none of Navi can actually find an initiation on some of these lower HP heroes of Bears. They get another melee Rax. Firo's finishing up the range Rax, and Navi are there playing around this shrine, but they can't actually deal with Forev. They can't get through this, this wall. Vada now turns, actually gets the initiation. Yapsor jumps forward, gets a two-man crush with Firo popping out. The eliminate Dendi as well. He does not have buyback. He's down for two minutes, and I think Navi have just lost the game like that. Game one was a relatively close affair. Back and forth, a lot of movement between these teams, but in the end, Bears are able to close it out quite nicely. Yeah, Navi had a, a really strong like small little period of time in the mid game where they managed to chain together uh, a couple of good pickoffs and one really nice fight putting bears a bit on the back foot but bears were the better team at adapting like as soon as that happened they're like okay they've now got an aegis they're now playing with a lot more confidence they pick, picked up all of a sudden the ta data list and then a couple minutes later there was a bkb so bears played around these items and navi's timing is very well like they didn't try and meet navi and play their game they just took the split push approach they started finding pickoffs because of the fact that Navi were split up through that split push, uh, and Navi just couldn't really find the ability to force a true 5v5 engagement when they had that advantage. Like when they had the Aegis, they had the Daedalus, they were just too split up around the map. Are you still down with the, the Weaver for Navi? It seems to be a very much a favorite of theirs in the 1 2. Do you still like this hero after this game one? I don't, I think it's just so flexible and. It's very nice being on that dire side. It's kind of that like a Roche securing type hero. Uh, it seems to fit very well right now in the meta, but I think the big X factor of this game was the Timbersaw. Like that pick, not just countering the Weaver, but countering it felt like the entire drop. Outside of the Sand King, the other four heroes all match up very poorly against Timbersaw. And even Sand King, I mean, he's got some, some decent magic damage there, but isn't like an uh, amazing counter by any means. So uh, I feel like Forev, despite perhaps not having like the best kill line at the end of the game like he was only in three of the kills 11 assists he he really soaked up a ton of navi's attention it also ends the game the most farm well one of the most